There's a couple of things uh, going on to we should report. First of all, the uh, the power company, the Hawaiian Electric Company, has uh, removed all of the uh, you know all of the the transformers and the poles and the wires and uh, some would call it evidence, um, but they've removed all of that from the scene. And they said that's on, they only did that because well they don't own uh, any of the land uh, you know they're just beyond the power uh, substation. So they wanted to clean it up, make sure that everything was good. <clears throat> they said they took pictures, though. So that's good. That's good. Yeah. You know, picture is worth a thousand words, Glenn. Yeah, and, it really uh, is. What a surprise. This is a, you know, public-private partnership with the government, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so. uh, really surprised. It, ha- it didn't work out really well. It never does. Never does. They never seem to do their job. Um, by the way, they only released, what was it, 300 names of the missing... Um, yeah. on Friday, there's 1,100 people still missing. And, uh, I mean, I, I don't know why they're saying it that way. Um, it's, I mean, it's not that big of an island. I hate to be, I don't mean to be callous on this, but it's not that big of an island. It's not like, it's not like somebody, you know, uh, is wandering off and is lost or whatever. I mean, it's not that big. And, you know, it, what it would, what would it be? Yeah, somebody would... with Alzheimer's, maybe. Okay, yeah, that's a you possibility, know. right? A kid, maybe, maybe, but I doubt it. I mean, yeah, but it's poss- know, theoretically it's possible. Because um, yeah, why would you be missing like, or or somebody who's like just trying to disappear? Right. Yeah. You know, faking but, their death. I mean, out of uh, out of uh, th- that many missing, certainly I, I not, don't understand. Certainly it. not five percent, right? No. Like, what is the number here? I mean, God, I I mean, and you think about this: if all these people that are missing uh, are uh, gone, I mean, you know, this is a uh, horrifying, uh, like horrible. Tra- I mean, and this might be horrifying. why they're holding it back; like they don't want people to 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 really, re- you know, come to the point where they recognize what's happened here. This like, is maybe I don't know. I don't know what you it know, is. <clears throat> uh, J.P. Decker, he is uh, Mercury One's executive director. Uh, he was an executive producer for me and a producer for a very long time. He's uh, now over at Mercury One, and I believe you leave Hawaii today, do you not, JP? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I leave tonight. So is there any explanation why they are still holding these names? Glenn, I have, um, you know, we've been here almost five days, and that is one thing that every single local is confused on that we've spoken with. Um, I've spoken with a lot of people, and they said, we don't trust anyone. We do not trust what's coming out of the government. We don't trust what's coming out of not just the state of Hawaii, but the the county, and then also our federal government. How do they not? I mean, that is terrifying that they don't even believe the county. No. Um, and go, yeah, ahead. go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, it's just one word though about the locals is that's come up while we're you know talking with some of these stories are just again. Horrific, but these are some of the most resilient people I've ever met in my life. They yesterday, just a quick story. Yesterday we uh, we connected with this surfer. Uh, he's a pretty famous surfer on the island, and they said, "Hey, you know, we're we're getting a shipment from one of the other islands of surfboards and fishing equipment." And I I said, well, "One, we went and helped. We were in the water. We were pulling surfboards off the boat." We were doing, you know, getting fishing supplies. And I said, what, what is going on here? And they said, most of these kids lost their surfboards in the mental health crisis that is here right now from seeing people burning in cars, mm. from seeing their family members in their homes. Mm. This is the only thing that's going to bring this community back to what we, we know and we love. And so this guy is going to take kids, um, surfboards that were donated from other islands, and then the fishing supplies is just going to go to these local fishermen who lost literally everything. These are the guys who go out and buy the fish for all the tourists. And speaking with these people, and for me, yesterday we were at church, um, Harvest Church, which is one of our partners, um, and I was standing next to one of the worship leader's wives who lost everything in this fire. She's just bawling and crying out, and she they're singing this one of these songs and it's about how God is still in control in this disaster. Mm-hmm. And 
it, it was it was a powerful moment for me. I, I think this is the first time that I finally broke down um, from seeing the damage and seeing what this city is going through. And the one thing that really hits close to home is these these are Americans. These are our brothers and sisters. These, this isn't just uh, another story in the news cycle that's going to disappear. These are our people. And the fact that the government has has just decided to, one, block everyone from going back in still. Um, there's a few people that have been able to go back in and look at their homes. But, two, they're, they're, I mean, we've gone past, we have to drive through part of Lahaina every single day if we want to get to another part of the island. And you see the destruction, and you smell the smoke still. You smell the ashes and, you know, those black walls that are going up on the road that everyone says the government's covering up, the ashes, all this. And it's what we've learned what we've seen across the whole island are those black walls are so that ashes in the teeth of whatever is left of any mm. of those human remains don't go into the street and don't Ugh. get lost. It's just, it's devastating, Glenn. Devastating. I know, you know, people ran into the water and how many yeah. people, I mean, how far in the water did they go? I hear some of them were in the water for eight or 10 hours, just treading water. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Glenn, we, we were uh, with a, a couple of people yesterday, and there was a story of this teacher, and sh- the fire's coming down towards the ocean, and she had to run, jump in the ocean with a group, a big group of people. She doesn't know how many, but a big group of people, and they all jump in. They treaded water and swam for up to eight hours, and everyone around her drowned. Oh my gosh. She's, she's trying to rescue these people, these kids, these dads, these moms, these grandparents, but she, she could, she couldn't do anything. And so she just, she just tried to tread and swim, but everyone around her drowned. They ended up finding her eight hours later alive. This, this lady, a mile off the coast. This shouldn't have happened this way. How, how did where there were not the people? Yeah. Where were the, where were the coast guard boats or whatever boats what, why, yep. what happened? Every single local that I have spoken to are asking the same question. They're asking, you know, we've got installments all around this area on all these islands. Where was the military? And, you know, we've heard stories of some Navy SEALs coming in and, you know, just helping. And then some Chinooks that came in and helped try to rescue. And the Coast Guard came in later on to try to help. But we... We did confirm uh, with a couple locals who ran out that the police were so scared of the power lines that fell through the wind that people were not allowed to get out of Lahaina and during these fires because the police were blocking off because they didn't want them to run into the power lines that right. were still alive. Which, which is the <laughs> which job of the power about. company that always happens. A power line goes yep. down. And you shut everything off. What, why didn't they yep. shut it off? They, 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 don't, they don't want to. They haven't come out yet and said, that, said anything. <laughs> they, uh, don't want, they don't want to no. incriminate. I mean, uh, they don't want to say. No, uh, un- the other day, we were eating at a local restaurant, and we smelled a fire. Uh, this was the one that kind of you probably might have heard about. But there was a, there was a pretty large grass fire that was going towards Lahaina. Mm. And so... We smelled it, um, and then what's interesting, though, we're at this restaurant, and there's a FEMA person, there's a Red Cross person, there's a guy who lost everything, um, and then there's a former Doctors Without Borders um, person, and she was here volunteering. And the power goes out, and all of our phones, emergency phone, you know what that's like, everybody's phone goes off, and it says evacuate. One, <laughs> Most of the people that are in that room didn't know quite what to do, which was interesting. I mean, and then the guy who lost his home, he's just, there's, there's tears because what do you do on this Island? There is no escape route. Lahaina is the escape route. You go through that street. There is no medical team on this side. There's no hospital on this side of the Island. And I mean, you have to go 45 minutes if something were to happen. And we've heard stories of, of some of the burn victims who ended up getting in those, the two ambulances on this side of the Island and died on the, in the ambulance, trying to get to a hospital. Mm. 
So, I mean, with, with what we're doing with Mercury One is incredible because within the first 48 hours, we sent a, a, a tech team, one of our incredible partners, the name is ITDRC, and they showed up with Starlinks to provide internet for the community because for three or four days, most of these people had no way of communicating to the outside world that we're still alive to their families and friends in the mainland. And one, why was it a nonprofit that came in and provide internet and the government did nothing? They ended up providing internet for the government and the community because they, they told us the other day, we can cut the red tape. We have no red tape, but the government has the red tape. So that's where they come to us. And, you know, we were one of the first ones to spare in purse to send in a cargo plane of supplies, food, water, um, and right now, this island doesn't need the food and water. What they need is the mental health. There's already been about um, five or six suicides. And that's just when you lose everything. Including your you, family. Including your family. And the, but the, the mental health side is something that we're going to be focused on. And it, 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 we spoke with a, a local restaurant owner the other day. And he just, and again, Glenn, you know, we, we brought cameras to help tell the story of what Mercury One and our partners have been doing on the ground, what we're going to do, because we're not here just for a small amount of time. We're here for the long haul. We don't just, I mean, when you started this, you said we're the first ones in, last ones out. That's what we do. And so we, you know, I was talking with the restaurant owner, and he just breaks down. And, you know, we didn't have the cameras with us. And you see, you know, all these people have been coming in with cameras. They've just been coming in and just want to take our story, and then we just leave again. And they, we've had business guys, this is what this guy said, businessmen come in, with wads of cash, drop it on our table and say, I'll buy you out. And I will, I will, you know, just buy you out. This guy has put up 20 of his staff in his restaurant. He's been providing hundreds of meals a day to people. I, I tried to offer some help and he said, I don't want help. He goes, what I want is for you to help other people, you, you to help my, my neighbors. Yeah. And when we say 100% goes, when, and that's usually what I would tell these people, hey, we're not your normal nonprofit. We're not a profit who takes overhead. We, we, we want to give 100% to this island, and that's, that's what we do. That's the most powerful thing. that, And they're shocked at it. They said, no, 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 we, I know you take overhead, all this. No, we don't. But I think, you know, anyways, I'm, I know I'm telling so many different stories, but this is, this is one for me personally. It's changed my life on what community looks like. These people are exactly what community. They're the definition of Ohana, which means family. And that is community. JP, thank you so much. Uh, Mercury One Executive Director uh, coming home today. Uh, but uh, as he said, our, our people and all of the charities we support will be the last ones out. Uh, so please, if you'd like to help us, uh, you, all you have to do is go to mercuryone.org and donate to our disaster relief fund. It's mercuryone.org.